Nice to meet you. Me too. Now you're All right, guys. So we are on day two. Um, sorry, call two of the keto cleanse. And so I wanted to, and I had the chance to speak with you, but Karen, I really haven't had a chance to talk to you. What brings you to, to try a keto cleanse? Did you hear my question? I you know were I'm frozen, so I didn't even hear what you said. I asked, what brings you to trying the keto cleanse? Can you hear that? I can't hear you. I heard my screen is completely frozen. Okay, I can actually hear you. Can you hear me or no? I can hear you now. All right, so what brings you to the keto cleanse? Are you talking to me? Yes. Um, I am determined to um, lose the extra weight that I have put on due to many years of prednisone on and off. Um, I have, the, the, the last five years have been very challenging for me. I put on, I, I lost 45 pounds in probably six months time during a extremely difficult divorce. So it was stress weight loss, which comes back right away. And of course it all did. As soon as I, my life calmed down and I got happy, it, I put on all that weight. Um, but I, I think, uh, you know, Gary shared with you, I um, became very involved with trying to heal myself. I became a health coach and I um, tried to take care of myself medically with the use of hemp oil. And I was extremely successful in, in getting rid of all of my symptoms of fibromyalgia. I got off of all medication. Ah. Um, um, just so you know, you, you must have muted yourself. I'm not sure if you, if you, let me unmute you. Hold on. Okay. You were muted for a second. So okay. out of yeah. all medications, you've been using hemp oil. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm off of all medications. I, my blood pressure is perfect. My cholesterol is perfect. Um, I actually feel better than I have in years. The only medical thing that I'm still dealing with is um, low iron level, and I'm taking iron supplements for that. My challenge is that I, for the last two years, my iron level has been very low, and when you're on all this yucky medication, I don't, you know, I didn't feel like exercising and I had very little energy. So now that I am back to being somewhat myself, I need to lose these 40 pounds. And um, I've never really been successful 
in losing this much weight because I never really had to worry about losing this much weight. Um, South Beach was the the most successful I've diet plan that I've done, and I know several people, especially people uh, our age, who have been very successful with paleo and keto. So that's why I'm here. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing that. That's really helpful for me also to help you. Um, and I know obviously you and I know each other and we've also worked together, but just share with us um, so Karen can get to know you a little bit. What brought you to, to the keto cleanse this week? Well, I, I have maybe less than 10, five to 10 pounds that I'd like to lose. But what I really want to play with is seeing if this will make me leaner because I do exercise, but I still don't really have the results that I want. Like I want ripped scary arms as I call them. Mm -hmm. And um, for all my efforts, I don't have them. And by the way, Stacy, I was cleared now. My elbow is good. I can start back with the weights. Okay. So I had tennis elbow for a while, so I wasn't able to do weights. I was only doing them on one side and not the other. So I'm a little out of whack and lopsided. So I want to get back to that. Okay. So um, it's kind of like a little experiment. Okay. And you know, losing a few never hurts anyway. No, absolutely. And honestly, as we know, this is the best way to do it. Um, so I'm going to share my screen with you because Karen, you and I really have not had a chance to get to know each other. I'll tell you a little bit about me and a little bit about what we're going to learn here today. So hopefully you can both see the, the seven day keto cleanse screen up. This is just a small window of a larger program, an eight week program that I offer. Um, it's the Keto Cure. And the Keto Cure is eight weeks of group meetings, just like we're having here. It's very convenient. You can sit in your jammies and you can drink your coffee, whatever works for you. Um, it's really a great group of women that I have in there. They're small, intimate groups. I try not to go more than. 10 people. I think we're up to seven right now. Um, and it's, it's really about low carb ketogenic dieting. It's low carb keto made simple. So I, I really wanted to call it keto for dummies, but I don't want to insult any of us that were in <laughs> it. But I literally dummy it down so that everybody gets the results and can go as deeply in as they feel they want to do. So hopefully you both cleaned out your kitchen and restocked with whole foods that are keto approved. That was in my first email, the guidelines for this cleanse and also the foods that are keto approved. Do any of you have any questions about any questionable keto food? Um, I, I am, am very friendly with so, uh, several girls in the yoga studio that I attend that are, are on keto. One says she eats berries and some fruit. The other says she doesn't. One says she eats cheese. The other one says no dairy. So... That's my struggle. That, those are such great um, questions. Thank you so much for bringing that up. So I'm going to give you the real answer to that. And here's, here's another thing. There's so much nutrition noise out there that it's very confusing about what you can and cannot have. So here's the reality. Just like any other destination there's a lot of different routes that you can take to get there and they're all called the same thing you know you're taking the highway route you're taking the back roads but there are a lot of different back roads and there are a lot of different highways so in the world of nutrition overall as I'm sure you've all experienced there's a lot of nutrition noise and there's within the world of ketogenic or low-carb dieting you will hear that same kind of noise and disagreement 
and a variety, you know, of ways to do things. Both fruit and dairy are a sticking point for some people. First of all, dairy and fruit both have carbs. Dairy, assuming you're 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 sticking to whole food real dairy, not like fruited yogurt. So I'm talking about plain Greek yogurt. I'm talking about, you know, half and half cheese, whole cheese, like real cheese, not highly processed like Merck's cheese. So the thing is, is dairy does have some carbs because there's natural sugars in, in dairy, which is called lactose. The other thing, and like berries, they're, even though they're a great healthy food, there are some natural, I mean, there are some carbs in there. So us. The answer to that question is some people use them and some people don't. And all of our bodies and all of our metabolism is different. And that's really where the power of coaching comes in. For this week, what I have prescribed, and only you know what's best for your body, Karen, but what I prescribed is no fruit. And if you, if you are not dairy sensitive, you can have the dairy items that are on the list. And that would be cheese. That would be plain Greek yogurt. I think I have plain Greek yogurt for this week. Um, but the thing is, is you... you I would recommend eating the meals that I prescribe. One of them is yogurt. And I do have cheese on that menu. So again, you the, that's really the, the hand, much of the hand holding that I do comes down to having a partner, a side-by-side -side partner, helping you evaluate what's best and what will work for your body. So thank you for that question. That's a really, really great question. Any other questions about low carb or keto? No. All right, I would, go ahead. Was someone about to say something? No. Okay. I would suggest taking your weight and your measurements this week. Um, whether or not you're joining us for the keto cure, um, it's probably a good idea if you choose to embark on a ketogenic diet because this happens to be a diet that gets results. So you're going to want to see your weights and measurements. And sometimes as your weight is stalled, you'll notice your measurements keep coming down. So these are two good objective ways to measure progress. Also, I, I believe both of you have, but if you haven't, make sure you have joined the group Go From Cravings to Control with Keto Living on Facebook. You're going to get a lot more tips and tricks there. And I would suggest thinking about your personal measure of success this week. So let's take a moment and think about that. Obviously, it's just one week. The so real, true weight loss is probably not going to happen. However, bloat, losing bloat in the first week, if you follow my plan, you should be losing water weight for sure. And possibly one of your goals is to explore this new way of eating. What resonates with the two of you as your goals for the week? Well, I, uh, like I said in the last call, I was a mess over the holidays. I ate, you name it, I ate it. And I was taking Zantac every day. I, I mean, there were days where I didn't eat anything green whatsoever, unless it was a sprinkle or something on a cupcake. But I was so disgusted with myself. I felt so awful and I couldn't wait to start, so I did start last Wednesday or Thursday. So luckily I have taken off about four pounds just because I, I had so much crap. So it's made a difference. Filled up with fluid. 
Ugh, it, I was, I, it was gross. So I feel so much it, you guys. That, that's a great way to think of a cart. When you're eating a piece of bread, I want you to start looking at it like a sponge. The minute you let go of that kind of eating, these sponges start squeezing out as you're depleting your glucose stores. So that's what happened to you. And that's why I say losing actual fat in a week, I would never promise that. But you, you will be able to lose bloat if you follow this plan. And that's exactly as you're describing. Those four pounds is typically the amount of fluid. For some people, it's even more. So that's great. So that was your goal for this week, Anne, is to lose. Right, and to get me back on track. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, to get away from that holiday mentality. Yeah. Absolutely. What about you, Karen? I don't know if you guys can hear me. I am hearing like one. Yeah, you are going in and out a little bit. Can you hear me now? All right, Karen, we cannot hear you. Um, and I hold on once up oh, and we just lost you up oh, there you are. Are you, Karen, you might be muted. Can you check your mute button? You got muted before. Yeah, every time I lose the screen, I, I come back and it's muted. So I didn't hear any of the conversation that you guys okay, just Okay, so I'm gonna sum it up for you just in the interest of time. Okay. So Anne was saying that the reason she's here, sorry Anne, I'm gonna take your words. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> a really rough holiday food-wise and she, really need to get okay. herself back on track. She was taking Zantac every day. And she started last Wednesday because she has some of my plans. And so she just got back on the bandwagon. It's been a week, she's down four pounds. Her goal this week was to get back on plan and lose some of the bloat and the heartburn. Right, Anne, you were trying to- Absolutely, that's not a good time. No. What about you, Karen? What is your realistic goal for this week? Keeping in mind that we're not gonna lose weight, weight, but we could very much lose the bloat. We could explore a new way of eating. What resonates with you as a goal for this week? Um, I, you know what, I'm, I'm a pretty clean, healthy eater. I um, am allergic to cow's milk. So I eat very, very little dairy, if any. Um, I am gluten-free and have to be gluten-free because I'm allergic to wheat. I tested for celiac two years ago and last year when I had my biopsy, I did not test for celiac. I, it did not come back positive. So, um, that's a good thing, but I tend to eat, um, in a way that does not cause bloating. And when I screw up and I eat something wrong, I definitely look like I'm six months pregnant. So I, I go right along with Anne. I would like to not, I, I would like to um, empower myself with the ability to not give in to urges and cravings because mm. typically they make me sick. <laughs> So yeah, I always yeah, say, we're never hey, being hey. by the chicken right. breast. No we're question. always being tempted by the stuff that is yeah. non-keto, typically has gluten. Uh, it's all the stuff that's not so good for us. Right. And I, I, my biggest challenge right now is um, I, I have a house guest. My boyfriend just had both of his knees replaced. And after three weeks of rehab, he came back here so that he wouldn't be in his apartment by himself. Mm -hmm. He's definitely a nosher and a sweet eater. Um, and, you know, I don't feel it's really right to, to restrict everybody else around me. Typically, I have tremendous willpower. So we'll see. Hopefully, I can keep that up. I, I am um, a person who, I, I mean, if I could lose two, two pounds a week, I would be a happy camper. And you know, urges, cravings, temptation, this is the kind of support that we give and get from each other 
um, in the keto cure because it's a very real thing. And ketogenic dieting itself, it's like you're living on a food island. That's the honest to God. You can find keto friendly foods most everywhere, but there is a lot of temptation out there. And um, yeah, support can really come in handy for that. The other really good thing, and Anne, I don't know if you'll agree with me, that I have found when, I, when I'm on keto, I am completely 100% not tempted. So the more I stick with it, the yeah. stronger my resolve because my insulin, my blood sugar is so stable that my brain is not as, um, as tempted. I feel so satisfied when I'm eating keto. Do you agree with that, Anne? Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't been on it long enough uh, to do like a long-term assessment. I, I was, I think on it for, you know, three weeks before the holiday started and, and then that messed me up. But, um, you know, I, and plus I have an advantage because I'm here in Florida by myself and my husband comes and goes. So it's just me. And so I can focus all on me. You know, if I don't buy it, I can't try it. So, you know, I keep the house pretty clean with no junk. Yeah. And, um, you know, my husband happens to be a maniac now that he lost weight and he works out a lot. So we're both on the same page. So it's much easier that way. You know, I, when you, yeah. I feel like when, you know, for children or for significant others, sometimes we do have food that is not keto. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're all in the same boat. Yeah. Um, my husband also, like I was really doing a lot of finger pointing at him just that <laughs> week. We went to Publix. We were in Florida too. We, we go to Publix to go grocery shopping and we each buy a cup of coffee and then he wants, you know, like a pastry with it. I'm like, <laughs> whatever. I'm like kind of rolling my eyes. I don't say much. And then all of a sudden the boys call, my boys, and they want to go to breakfast. And I know he's going to be eating, you know, bagels and all that stuff. And I just, you know, I'm like, that, whatever, do whatever you want. <laughs> you can't control what other people do. But what are some strategies that we can use that will help us stick to our plan and will also, you know, so their food doesn't sabotage. Let's just come up with a, a few quick strategies. Ooh, yeah, and it's hard also in the world now of shared plates slash tapas. Well, that's a whole nother story. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, let's order this for the table, for the table, for the table. Well, I don't want it, you know? I just want my plain stuff. And sometimes it's, it's challenging. So. I agree. When it comes to shared plate, I have literally said these, word, these words. I have said to my dinner mates, I'm a selfish eater. I need my own plate. I'm really sorry. Yeah. I don't want to pick from your plate. First of all, I hate that idea of everyone's fork going, I just hate that. <laughs> but secondly, I, I'm with you on that. I, I'm very outspoken when it comes to that. But let's quickly think about some strategies when people are not eating the way that they are. People who have children, people who have significant others that want some junk food. Let's come up with three fast strategies. I'm going to start. Each, everyone's going to come up with one. The first is move it, meaning that person has their own shelf of stuff that is out of your line of vision. What's strategy number two? Anne, come up with strategy number two. Um, just make sure that you have stuff that you can eat, which is sort of like that. You know, have the little individual packs of nuts or, you know, pieces of cheese or rather cut up veggies just ready for you to munch on and make Absolutely. it something, you know, if you, if you want crunch, get something crunchy. If you like the mushy texture, get, you know... The mushy store. Like have your stuff at the ready. You should have, you know, the the celery cut up. You should have, you know, your dips ready to go. 
you should have cheese or whatever you're eating, like cubed in portioned out. Absolutely. So, so far we've got move it, have your stuff at the ready. What's one other strategy that we can use? One of the most important things for me is to just be honest and ask whoever I'm with for help and assistance. Tell them that I'm on a program that, you know, it, it, this is what I eat, this is what I'm allowed to eat, and I need your help. So That's a good one. Please don't love put it. that crap in front of me. <laughs> I love it. Ask other people for help. I'll add one other thing if we're talking about your home. Um, and asking for help is a good one, guys. Even when you're out to dinner, like Anne, what you were talking about, when even when it's not small plates and everyone wants to share, I hate that. <laughs> so asking for help, guys, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm happy to pay my share, but I'm going to order my own dinner. I, I can't have a lot of what you're eating. I'm so sorry. Um, but the other thing I will add is don't use food as amusement. So if, for example, Karen, if your boyfriend is in the habit of like got a bag of chips in front of him while he's watching TV at night, Food is to sustain us. It's to keep us healthy. It's to keep us active and energetic. Food is not entertainment. Yes, food is delicious. You can have fun cooking. You can enjoy great recipes. But mindless munching should always be a no-no in any situation, whether you're eating keto-friendly foods or not. Be intentional. Yeah, I, I, I also have to keep myself very busy because I find that I'm, I'm a focused person and when I'm focusing on losing weight, I also focus on eating and food. I love it. Food becomes way too important. Absolutely. These are all great tips. Thank you so much, you guys. for That's great tips. The one other thing I want to suggest is using my fitness pal not required for the week you can just follow my food plan but it's always helpful going forward if you ever need my help it it's just helpful to have some data to work with also weighing and measuring seems like a really silly minor thing but i'm a strong believer of it because sometimes we're just eating too much and that's when our weight gets stalled so really quickly, I just want to tell you about myself. I am a board certified coach. I'm a BCC. Um, as you can see, I lost about 25 pounds. I started off, just, first of all, I was in this horrible cycle of fad dieting when my kids were young, and I literally suffered with what I'll call this disease for about 20 years, constantly changing my method, just couldn't stick with anything I had did not have the support I needed I did not have a credible source of information I finally went to Weight Watchers loved Weight Watchers loved the community loved the meetings turned out to be a life-changing experience for me because I became a Weight Watcher leader for almost 10 years in addition to doing some other things for the company and but at the end of the day the thing that i noticed about weight watchers which was also life-changing for me was that i could not get to my goal i got to their goal but i could not get to my goal and i realized that at the end of the day that program was not going to work for me and it really encouraged me to get training in nutrition so i went to precision nutrition and i got my certification in nutrition, and I really started learning that's really how I arrived at low carb and ultimately ketogenic dieting. So I'm a huge low carb fan. I feel like as a society, we are eating way too many processed foods, which ultimately means that our carbohydrates are way too high. And that is why we are sick and fat. And I know for me, that made a huge difference in how I feel, in how I look, in my body composition, et cetera. So Can I just I request, you got to change that picture, Stacy. <laughs> Which one, the before or the after? The after. You look so scary and mean <laughs> in that picture. I'll tell you what I was thinking in that picture. It was <laughs> not meant for public 
Now, <laughs> the only reason I use it is because it was an epiphany at that moment. I was shopping. I was in Bloomingdale's and I'm walking and I'm thinking. And I had gone off keto for like, like you, like I had a few, a really rough few weeks. I was ill. I was aggravated. I put on a few pounds and that's me putting on a few pounds. And then, well, and then I went right back on keto, just like you did. I was on for like a week and I felt a hundred percent better. Like you could not even compare how I felt. And it was that moment that I said to myself, ketogenic dieting is the right plan for me. I finally had the confidence at that moment that I knew that this is what I was, this is the, my, this way of eating was what my body liked. <laughs> and it was that moment. I know it's a really weird thing. Smiling a better a revelation. <laughs> I don't have a lot of pictures of myself. And every now and then when I'm with like my one son, either one of my sons, because they're great like photographers, I'll ask them to take pictures of me and I always feel silly. So I'm not the, I, I'm, I don't seem camera shy because I'm not a shy person, but I, I don't love taking like pictures of myself. Anyway, so I also wanted to make sure, um, I know you know this, Anne, but Karen, I wanted to make sure if you can hear me, that you understand the difference between ketogenic diet and low carb dieting. So can you hear me, Karen? I can hear you now, yeah. Okay, so I don't know if you've heard anything, but I wanted to make to see if you understood the difference between low carb and ketogenic dieting. Um, well, if, if I understand it correctly, ketogenic dieting is literally turning your body into a fat burning machine. That's exactly right. Um, and and it is low carb. I know we have to have some carbs, but very low amounts of carbs. Yeah, the truth of the matter is, is believe it or not, there is no recommended daily allowance for carbs. Yeah, I can't, I can't hear what you're saying. Okay. So check, you know what it is too, Karen? You might not have good bandwidth because maybe somebody else is on their computer and live streaming. So I don't know if you can hear me. I, I can hear you now. I didn't hear anything you okay. said before. What that. I said was on these kind of calls, it takes more bandwidth. And if somebody else is in your house and they're on the computer or on a device and they're live streaming anything, it takes away from your bandwidth. Yeah, no, there's no one else here. Okay. Okay, so really quickly, you're absolutely right on ketogenic dieting. The difference between keto and low carb is low carb means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And I have many clients who are starting at such high levels of carbs that I'm just bringing them down to more reasonable levels. And for that, for them, that's considered low carb. So I low can't, carb can be a lot of things. Okay, I'm gonna move forward. Okay, so if you can hear me, um, ketogenic dieting might be right for you. If you are playing with the same few pounds and you can't seem to get any traction, if you're unhappy with your body composition, like a larger percentage of fat that doesn't seem to change, even when the scale is going down, and you're looking for a method to make it easier for your body to tap into its own fat reserves, you might be looking for a lifestyle that will improve your health. Perhaps you've had lifestyle markers. If you have health issues, I always recommend that while you're doing this program, you should be working with your doctor. Um, ketogenic dieting might be right for you. If you're, you find that you're always hungry, it just means that your hormones are out of whack. And this is a great way to get your hormones back in line. You might be looking for more energy or better sports performance. You might more, want more clarity, more focus. You might just want to look better. Or like me, you might want to have the confidence that you have finally found what works for you and you want to commit to this way of life. All right. So, um, 
Karen, you, you and I can stay on if you want, because I know you're having a hard time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, looking, or you can look back on the recording because um, everything should be recorded. Okay. So guys, when you eat a diet that's low in carbs, that's really low in carbs, your body is going to burn through its glycogen stores and it does need an energy source. So that's why we eat a diet that's higher in fat. Plenty of fat will raise the amount of ketones that you have and fat burning and the amount of ketones that you have circulating in your body go hand in hand. And the thing about the keto cure is I keep it really simple. It's not, you know, I don't get too complicated with macros unless that client is ready for it. But what we do is we sort of translate all of this into real food and what you should be eating at every meal. Now, I have to give you a reality check for this week. You may not achieve nutritional ketosis in just one week. It's different for everybody, but it usually takes about two weeks. And that is not the purpose of this cleanse. The purpose of this cleanse from my standpoint is to help you get rid of the holiday bloat and to educate you about the new way of eating. So no. I have one question, though. Sure. Um, it takes about two weeks to achieve ketosis, but how long does it take till you kind of see on your body, you know, oh, well, maybe there is some more definition here, or maybe I, you know, maybe my waist is smaller. Like, does that, is it so noticeable once, once you're kind of, in that zone? Well, I wouldn't say that's going to happen in a week for the purpose no. of the cleanse. No. Um, however, I will tell you, and that's going to be a very personal question because like I mentioned, mm -hmm. all of our bodies are different and weight loss is really a function of many factors. Um, but I will say for me personally that the more consistent I am every single day and as the glycogen stores are depleting and I'm, I find myself going to the bathroom a lot, you know, peeing a lot. That is when you can see my muscle because before that I'm so bloated if I'm eating a lot of carbs. Um, also, you need to build muscle to have muscle and that's where weight loss can be a little deceiving in. So if you're actively trying to build muscle, you might want to have your body fat percentage taken so that you can have another method of measurement. Mm -hmm. The more mm -hmm. consistent you are with ketogenic eating, the more you're going to notice your body composition changing. Okay. So the more we can build up ketones uh, in our blood, the more we are burning fat and that takes consistency. So um, I was talking to someone the other day and he was mentioning kind of like me, like there, I go through periods that, you know, I, it's a little cheat here, a little cheat there, it's unplanned. Um, but these little things can really prevent you from getting to your goal. Ketogenic dieting, more than other plans, I hate to say it, but it is a little bit more unforgiving. So I can intentionally eat a piece of bread. Like if I'm going to a great restaurant, I know they have phenomenal bread and it's been a great month. I might say to myself, you know what? I'm going to have a piece of bread. No big deal. I'll have one piece of bread. I get right back on the next day. No biggie. I use intermittent fasting. Easy. But if I'm just cheating little bits here and there, and then all of a sudden my carbs are going up, for me, this is me, my carbs are going up by maybe 10 grams, 20 grams, fluctuating each and every day, for me, that's enough to prevent fat loss. So the more consistent you are across the board, the more you're gonna see results on your body, the more your cravings are gonna disappear, if you're having an issue with body composition, like you were stating, Anne, that you want to start seeing more muscle, it's all about consistency. 
It's got to become a way of life, not a diet plan. Do you um, endorse the ketogenic testing strips or it's not necessary? No. So um, keto sticks, which is the urine testing strips, the reason I don't endorse them is because they're not accurate. Here's the thing on ketones. There are three different types of ketones. When you first start a ketogenic diet, you start peeing a lot, as I mentioned, and you're not using the ketones yet. So you're losing the ketones through your urine. That's what the keto sticks are picking up. But after about two weeks of ketogenic dieting, what happens is you're not excreting the ketones anymore. And a new kind of ketone emerges. It's called BHB, beta hydroxate a beta hydroxybutyrate. And this ketone is in your blood and that and you're actually using it. So if you're using ketone testing strips, after two weeks on the plan, you'll see zero, but really in fact, you are in ketosis because you're not losing it through your urine. What I do and what I recommend, if you want to test, is ketonics. It is a um, breathalyzer, like a, you know, like an alcohol breathalyzer, but it tests for ketones. And they say that it's pretty accurate. It does accurately correspond to the BHPs in your blood. And I've used it, and it's not the best device in terms of how it hooks into your computer and the actual technology, but the device itself, I would say, seems very accurate. So it's made by Ketonics, K-E-T-O-N-I-X. It's about $200. Um, however, I want to also say you don't have to test for ketones. If you are following the plan and you are following a ketogenic plan, you will be in ketosis. And it's really not necessary to test. The only reason I test is it helps me understand my body and how certain foods affect my blood sugar, which is ultimately affects your level of ketones. And I have type two diabetes in my family. I have no markers for type two diabetes, but I have to eat a pretty low level of carbs to get results. That's just my body and my genetics. So that's the only reason I use it. I don't, I don't encourage or recommend that the people in the keto cure use it, but if they use it, I can guide them. And is it necessary to have some carbs? I mean, it's not necessary to have any carbs because your body can actually create carbs from proteins and it can also create energy from fat. But in the keto cure, I would encourage you to eat vegetables, but not unlimited vegetables. And some people, we start off the keto cure with lazy keto. So what I mean by that is it's a very general program with a lot of guidance. I had a member lose 12 pounds in the eight weeks just doing lazy keto. Some people will just get to goal on lazy keto. So you don't have to necessarily count your macronutrients, but once lazy keto stops working for you, if your weight loss stalls, then we can go into either macros or exchanges, like using food exchanges. Some people macros, it's too, too overwhelming for them. So I just, I translate it for them. Does that answer your question? Karen, that answers your question. All right, I must be frozen. Are you, am I frozen? All right, so let's move on. So really quickly, I'll give you a sample day of what you could eat on the keto cleanse or on a ketogenic diet. But basically, you should have some coffee. I like to put, for me, coffee is a great conduit for fat. I'm drinking right now um, coffee with heavy whipping cream. I also have been known to do a teaspoon of coffee with some unsweetened almond milk in it. An almond with broccoli, some bacon for breakfast, 
salad greens, two to three ounces of grilled chicken breast, and a quarter cup of feta, and then some dressing for lunch. And then a six ounce filet will make me very happy in the evening with two cups of vegetables. And I use about two tablespoons of olive oil just for my portion for cooking or finishing so that I got plenty of fat throughout the day. Yeah, I, I question when you do a recipe that calls for, you know, butter or oil, and then it's multiple servings, it's kind of, you know, you're not getting all the fat that you were intending to get because it's, so you just add more afterwards? You could, you could finish with fat, absolutely. Like I love to like drizzle olive oil. Last night I ordered a salad for dinner. Um, I didn't get my daily salad, so I really wanted a salad. So um, it had, you know, turkey and it had feta cheese and vegetables and a little bit of bacon. And I didn't want their dressing. I knew it would be full of sugar. So I asked for just olive oil and vinegar and I just loaded it up with olive oil and I was like, okay, that's about two tablespoons. And it may have been more and that's okay. Yeah. I'm giving my body plenty of fat to use as energy. And Anne, you're a walker like I am and our bodies need the fat because they need the energy. Yeah. So feel yeah. free to be liberal. Well, it's not such a great day to walk today. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to go shortly. I'm really, I'm going to go. It's my last day here. So Ooh. I'm going to go. I hope you don't get caught. I don't think so. <laughs> I will. Because it's nice like the out to the north. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. We'll see. I'll see when I'm off the phone. But anyway, so do you have any questions about keto flu or? No, you know, I don't have any symptoms. Okay, I that's good. That's, even you know, the last started and it could take about two weeks, just so you know. But if you're drink, are you drinking the broth? I just bought it yesterday, so I'm going to have it. Um, I think I'm going to do it for lunch, with, okay. and then I'll add chicken to it. Um, and I've got some leftover Brussels sprouts from dinner. So um, yeah, but I I saw that it was on sale at Whole Foods, like that woman said uh, last call but then there's also individual I think the name was Pacific or some yeah whatever. Pacific they have like an organic brand they have eight ounce individual like little juice boxes of it because I hate sometimes to open up a whole big container and then you know you go out a lot or whatever and then it's sitting there and it goes to waste so I'd rather spend a little more money on the individual ones and then I know I've got it and I'm not wasting anything. Right. So, so just by doing the broth alone, you may just completely avoid it. Yeah. And I am adding salt. Like if I'm, you know, making eggs, I put salt on it. I put salt on whatever. And I never was a salt user before. Okay. So. See, when you're on a ketogenic diet, it is, it, it is a little like living on a food island because we need the salt because we're excreting the salt. So you need to replace it. And I would suggest Himalayan salt. Okay, because I have sea salt. salt. Sea salt sea is salt okay. fine too. Okay. Sea salt, I just wouldn't use like regular, like, you know, shaker salt. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, any other thoughts or questions? Our next call is January 14th at four o'clock central. Okay, I know um, Kenny will be here, so I may, not make, I may not make that one. Kenny will be here, so I may not make that call. No problem. And if you know, you can always reach out to me. Um, and if you have questions or anything you want to contribute to the group, do so through Go From Cravings to Control with Keto Living Facebook group. Okay, okay perfect. Okay. So, therefore, I will... Talk to you soon. Right. Thank you again for travels. joining And have a great day. All right, you too. Get out there. I will for sure. Bye. Take care. Bye.